When it comes to the world of creepy crawlies, perhaps the most iconic of them all is the spider. This hairy, eight-legged freak is easily associated with the genres of horror, surrealism, and due to its alien-like aesthetic can be used in bizarre related genres, but more than that, this little creature can also easily be integrated into natural landscapes, and beyond that is just a really versatile feature that can be used in all sorts of ways. Furthermore, it is a great opportunity to explore color variation due to the nature of the variations of colors that come with different tarantula species, and beyond that, it is a great opportunity to explore shading techniques as well as different drawing styles. So with that being said, hey guys, my name is Matt, welcome to another video by artincontext.org where we explore various art related topics, and in today's video we will be learning how to draw the iconic tarantula. So now that we know what's in store, let's get into it. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by forming the spider shape with some general line work. So in this particular video we will be learning how to draw the Mexican red knee tarantula. Now what's really fun about drawing spiders or tarantulas more specifically are there's so many different spider species to explore and they come in so many different color variations. And in this particular case the Mexican red knee comes in a really beautiful coloration. So we're going to kind of be using this as a reference to define the colors that we will be using in our specific tarantula drawing. Now a good idea would be to look at various um, Mexican red knee uh, reference images to give you an idea of the actual shape and form of the spider. But what we're going to do is we're going to start by forming the spider shape with some line work. So we want to begin by creating a simple and basic line sketch of the spider's basic form. So we start by breaking the spider up into its different components, starting with a head shape that will be um, for the fangs. So we want to basically draw this as a circular bullet head shape. Uh, we will be drawing the spider from a side angle in this particular case. So this means on one side uh, some features will be more visible than others naturally. So from there we also want to draw both the cephalothorax and the abdomen of the spider as two domes or circular shapes that connect to the fang area or the head shape. Now a good idea is also to kind of um, again use a reference image not only to understand color variation specifically for the Mexican red knee tarantula spider but it will also help you to understand various um, terms associated with the various features so basically what the names of these various features are and this will just assist you a little bit more effectively in your drawing process. Now the cephalothorax should be larger than the head and the abdomen should be slightly larger than that of the cephalothorax so from there we want to draw three legs on one side of the spider sprouting from the cephalothorax. Uh, so basically the thorax is that central feature between the abdomen and the head and that's kind of of where we can establish where the actual legs sprout from. Uh, the back legs should sprout in a backward direction almost as if they sit parallel to that of the abdomen whereas the middle two legs kind of move out in a lateral direction from the thorax or the cephalothorax. Then the front legs will move forward almost parallel with that of the head and then lastly the pedipalps will move in a forward direction directly facing um, so they should be facing kind of directly forward. Uh, we want to use the first set of legs um, on one side of the spider to kind of guide how we place the second set on the further side. So naturally again if we're drawing the spider from a, a side angle we will establish the legs that will obviously sit in the foreground as one side is obviously closer to us and therefore in the foreground and then we'll use that to kind of define where exactly the legs in the background should be placed. Again the idea is to really think about how the actual anatomy of the spider works in terms of placing in these general lines and then once we have this general line sketched down and, and have established the spider in its basic elemental shapes we can then start to refine the spider through a sketching process. Now using the line work we want to start drawing in the different features of the spider and this is again where we start to refine the features with some actual detailing and we do this by starting with the features that sit on the foreground and seem the closest uh, to us. So starting with the legs you want to draw the different segments um, over the line work again using in the line work to kind of help assist you in your sketching process so the idea is to make sure that you are starting with the legs and then you want to draw the different segments over the line work so moving along the side of the spider let us go through each leg and draw in the different segments in this case we will want to make sure our spider's legs all have an equal amount of five segments so we will find that specifically with the uh, mexican red knee spider uh, tarantula they do have five segments within each leg and we just want to keep that consistent within each of the visible legs, the entire visible legs in 
the foreground. We also want to consider how the legs will flow from the side of the cephalothorax. Uh, in this case, the tarantula, the legs will move in different directions for stability. So again, we find that the back legs kind of move uh, in a backward direction. Then the middle two legs will kind of uh, move outwardly from the side and kind of in a sideward direction, in a lateral sideward direction. And then the front two legs will move kind of towards the front. And this kind of stabilizes the spider. So the legs almost have this like circular structure structure to give the spider stability. Now another small feature to note as we kind of refine our sketch is that the last segments of each foot um, uh, or in each leg are generally smaller as well except for the hind legs where the last segments will be slightly larger. So that's a small detail you do want to make note of uh, in the sketching process. Um, we want the legs to also curve around the body all connecting to the cephalothorax of the spider So as we come to the front of the spider the pedipalps should also extend out from the thorax uh, And then moving forward directly next to the head uh, Kind of remaining parallel to the head on either side of the head The little head shape we have drawn is not necessarily a head but the space allocated to the fangs So we want to draw the fangs in an arc shape uh, Kind of curving downward the fangs should be within the middle of each pedipalp. Uh, the pedipalp should have only four segments again and should not um, be as long as the legs of the spider. So the pedipalps will have four segments and will be slightly smaller than that of the legs. The pedipalps also extend slightly ahead of the fangs and move in a uh, front direction as they will have like these little arms used to grab prey. So the idea of the pedipalps are kind of like these little arms that are placed next to the fangs and move in a frontward direction and that's kind of how they grab prey. We also want to make sure that each leg that has five segments and that they flow in a way that makes sense with how it would stabilize the spider uh, on an actual ground surface or a horizontal plane. So again, as you slowly sketch and refine your spider drawing uh, by drawing over the line work and these kind of shapes establishing the abdomen, the thorax and the head structure uh, where the fangs and the pedipalps will be, you do just want to make sure that again you're looking at a reference image to guide you as you kind of define these various features. As you proceed to draw the legs positioned um, on the less visible side of the spider, again you want to make sure that there is this kind of realistic form to the legs. So we want to consider how they would curve behind the spider as they kind of arc downward to the ground. So another thing to note about a spider is that the legs do have these arcing motions where they arc upward and then downward. And we'll find that the body is almost positioned slightly lower than that of the first two segments connected to the thorax as they kind of move in an upward direction and then they slowly start to arc downward and then go below the body. So that is something to take note of in terms of defining the legs that are less visible and in the background where we see that arcing motion as it then curves downward and then becomes less visible as they kind of connect to the ground. So make sure you take your time working out the different features of the spider during this uh, early pencil sketching stage of the tutorial. Uh, we can also add a pattern design um, of our choosing to the cephalothorax at this point um, and the abdomen and doing so later will assist us in how we add color to the spider. Now basically once we have uh, established this general sketch and we've refined it um, we should be left with a, an actual sketch of our red our Mexican red knee tarantula. So now what we want to do is we're going to start adding color to one set of the legs at first. So what we'll do is we'll integrate color slowly into our spider drawing but we'll go through various components one at a time. So we'll now want to continue by adding color to the spider drawing starting with the aspects of the spider that are set in the foreground. Uh, we want to now be strategic with how we add in color in that sense so with the legs we want to make sure that there is this consistency in coloration now again we want to follow the same process as we did for the sketching of the spider so as we add the color we want to make sure that the sequence of colors are the same so we also don't want to simply fill different features of the spider with color but add color to the spider by the use of strokes or lines of color so by doing so this is also a great way to simultaneously create this texture of this hairy quality that is very unique or synonymous with the with the spider so we do want to think at this point already about how our different drawing techniques can be used in a strategic way to represent textures uh, within our spider drawing so as you color in your spider allow yourself to be playful with your color choices um, as long as you have consistency within the color placement in the spider's features you can choose whichever colors you would like to use again even though we are drawing a mexican red knee spider you can just use this as a reference so you can deviate from those colorations but you can also use the color 
colors and this color scheme in that uh, reference image to kind of inspire your own color choice. Uh, and what you'll find is that naturally within the Mexican red knee spider, there's quite a consistency in the placements of colors, but also there are a very um, finite amount of colors. So that's something you want to bear in mind. Remember, we want to add color by the use of little strokes as well um, and kind of integrate color through the use of these little lines. And this will give that tarantula a hairy quality whilst we add color in simultaneously. Now we're going to spend some time on the cephalothorax and abdomen. So as we come to the completion of coloring the legs on one side of the spider, we can now start to color in the thorax. Uh, again, the thorax can also be colored in any color of your choice. But once again, both the um, cephalothorax and the abdomen exist within the midground of the drawing, which means we want to color them in at this point. The idea is to work from the foreground features all the way to the background features. Uh, with the cephalothorax and the abdomen, don't have to be necessarily the same color, so don't worry about making them the same color. In fact, a good suggestion is to make them different colors. So making the legs, abdomen, and cephalothorax of the spider different colors also gives your drawing a little bit more of a nuanced quality, makes it a little bit more unique and interesting. However, again, just remain consistent where there are various parts around the spider so in the case of the legs you want to keep those color variations um, pretty much the same but as you color in the pedipulps um, and as we move towards the head area that exists within the midground as well we also want to make sure that they are the same color as the legs uh, the pedipulps of the spider normally have the same coloration sequence as that of the legs of any spider so just think of them as another set of legs in the in the sense of how you integrate color uh, when adding color to the spider we want to make sure that we don't just fill the spider in with solid color once again we want to make sure that we are kind of being strategic by our drawing techniques here so using strokes and lines is a great way not only to uh, build up your tonal values of various colorations within various features but also to kind of maintain that quality of a hairy texture within your spider um, as we go through the different areas of the spider adding in color we also want to make sure we do two things for one we want to add color with the approach of lines and strokes but then secondly we also want to make sure that our colors sequence is consistent so just remember those two things um, and as you kind of work your way through the entire structure of your spider uh, bear those two things in mind however with the abdomen the cephalothorax and the actual head structure of the spider you can play around with variation in color because those are three individual features again we also want to make sure that as we continue with the other set of legs by adding the same color sequence uh, we are again keeping consistency with the legs that are in the background remember that the coloration on the areas that kind of connect to the cephalothorax are going to be the same so naturally as they curve downward and they become less visible in their lower section we just want to maintain that consistency of coloration on the top section or the top segments that actually connect to the spider uh, make sure that you take your time slowly drawing in these strokes of lines with your various colors uh, and make sure that you also keep consistency within the sequence of colors for the various features of the spider um, and once again just remember with the main body sections of your spider you can play around with difference uh, in terms of color values uh, once again we are looking at the Mexican red knee as an example of how colorations exist within um, a spider and how they kind of are consistent in various areas and then kind of difference in various areas so with the three main sections that make up the body of the spider the abdomen the cephalothorax and the head structure where the uh, pinches or the fangs rather are connected those areas can change and shift in color but when it comes to the legs we do want to keep them consistent in their color values uh, and once again using that reference to guide you in your own color choices is completely up to you otherwise you can stick to the actual coloration of the Mexican red knee spider now once we have completed adding in some color we're going to shift into adding in some pen for contrast and definition now we're going to use ballpoint pen and the reason why we use ballpoint pen is because it works really similar to that of a pencil and can also provide this kind of pencil drawing uh, process where the ink comes out quite sparingly due to the nature of a ballpoint pen and that gives us a lot of agency over our mark making process so once we have completed um, the color values um, and the tonal values of color within our spider we now will work with a ballpoint pen going over the color to give the spider a little bit more definition and contrast so starting with the legs once again we want to add in some line work and strokes with our ballpoint pens at this stage we're going to take our time going through all the various 
features, kind of approaching it as we did with our colored pencils where we are thinking about our drawing techniques to enhance the spider. We're also not overpowering the spider with our ballpoint pen detailing, rather we are emphasizing the color values and kind of outlining certain features and adding some shading here and there to kind of emphasize the three-dimensional nature of our spider. Now we want to make sure that when we go through the spider drawing in the same way that we did for the sketching and the coloring process, we are making sure that we attend to every feature uh, moving from the foreground, shifting our way to the background. Again, the aim here is to not overpower the spider drawing with black ballpoint pen marks, rather we want to add a few lines to various features of the spider while slightly outlining the different components of the spider simultaneously. We also want to make sure that we take our time. When we are adding in these little strokes, we want to be conscious of how to emphasize the color values without overpowering them. So the idea is to really pay attention to areas where there are overlaps, uh, connection points such as the the little separations between the various segments within the legs or the various separations between the abdomen, the cephalothorax and the head structure. Another thing to note is that we want to be conscious of a light source in terms of how we define our shadow formations. And this is why we want to emphasize connection points and outlining with our ballpoint pen and kind of integrate shading in those connecting areas or where there would be areas where the spider uh, has features that would overlap such as the segments or uh, maybe the legs are kind of or the pedipalps are overlapping the fangs of the spider so just be uh, very conscious of these moments of overlap and how naturally that would cause a shadow formation on the surface area of the spider now as we work slowly with our ballpoint pens making sure we go through each aspect of the spider with caution uh, we also want to make sure that we are slowly integrating these strokes of lines i can't stress that enough this little uh, shading and drawing technique of integrating lines as opposed to smooth shading uh, is a really good way to again emphasize that hairy texture uh, of the spider and this is going to give your drawing a more realistic quality um, but as you come to the cephalothorax you want to be very delicate with adding in line work uh, especially in this section we want to subtly add in some light line work that simply outlines the pattern uh, the pattern in the cephalothorax is really important in terms of capturing um, that unique pattern so again you can play around with that pattern uh, and you should have established a pattern in your early sketching phase and then kind of worked in some color around it but the idea is to now kind of emphasize that pattern with some line work using your ballpoint pen and you also want to be conscious of the uh, smaller details near the cephalothorax uh, and such as the eyes where these kinds of details uh, require a lot more attention so again this stage is simply about adding little lines to different areas of the spider with some light shading and outlining um, and then we also want to make sure that the colors are not overpowered that is really important as well so really make sure you take your time also another good idea is to um, um, just take a break when it comes to integrating a lot of line work and kind of being uh, cautious and detailed with your drawing process it can be quite mentally strenuous so taking a break can just be a good way for you to feel refreshed and come back into the drawing process without making silly mistakes um, uh, we can also do the same with the abdomen in terms of our sketching process where we add a set of lines and strokes to kind of uh, form the abdomen uh, or create this hairy texture around the abdomen so the spider doesn't just have hairy legs the entire body and legs and entire structure of the spider tends to be quite hairy which is very unique to the tarantula species so this means we want to integrate these strokes of lines into all the areas of the spider and this means not only the legs but um <coughs> And this means again not only the legs but from the pedipalps to the fangs to the cephalothorax and even to the abdomen as well but again make sure you take your time you can still use some colored pencils at this point to emphasize coloration if you need to but once we have done that we should have basically a completed spider drawing again the process of drawing a tarantula is really simple however to emphasize the realistic nature of our drawing we're going to give the spider uh, a shadow formation beneath it so once we are satisfied with our pen strokes and our spider drawing we want to give a spider a shadow and this is just further going to contextualize the three-dimensional nature and how it is placed in an actual 
uh, space and environments without necessarily looking like it is floating in a void. So once we have added in some light pencil marks underneath the spider, we want to make sure that we are basically creating the shadow formation that connects to all the points of the spider that connect to the ground. Again, we're also trying to be conscious of the perspective from which we are viewing the spider. So if we, if we are viewing the spider from a side angle, naturally this means only some features will be visible and the shadow will start to kind of disappear where naturally the uh, background features become less visible as they connect to the ground. But the idea is to make sure you keep your shadow kind of slightly distorted, uh, especially because of how it sits on a horizontal plane, the shadow will be slightly distorted and flattened, but making sure it connects to all the various points of the spider that make contact with the ground and then building it up with some tonal value or darkening it um, as you would like, maybe with a darker medium such as ballpoint pen. But otherwise guys, that is the general process of how to draw a tarantula, really fun, really simple simple, really beautiful, and really easy to make realistic. Some key things to think about is breaking up the spider into its fundamental forms with a simple sketch, uh, establishing the various components with some shapes and line work, then refining those shapes into an actual identifiable structure of uh, a tarantula spider, and then slowly starting to build up the tonal values with color, and then enhancing them with some shading and darker detailing where you can maybe use something like a ballpoint pen uh, or even a darker pencil. But otherwise, guys, the last thing to remember is to always think about your light source and shadow and how this naturally will affect the three-dimensional nature of your spider. Remember shading is representing shadow and shadow defines three-dimensionality within structures and objects um, and that's how we represent them um, as three-dimensional structures uh, through a drawing process. But otherwise guys thanks so much again for tuning in. If you did like this video and are interested in similar topics related to nature or insect drawing, birds, um, animals, uh, you name it please let us know in the comment section below. We love to make videos related to these topics, but please do show us some love by dropping a like and subscribing. This ultimately um, grows the channel, which enables us to make more art related content for you guys. But once again, thanks for tuning in. It was really fun. Um, until next time, cheers.